Hey DMRs, what's up? Mike Borders with the Mike Borders channel. Thank you for watching. We are talking Mercruiser Outdrive or Stern engines. And in today's video, we are going to show you the full rebuild of the lower unit. And this is everything into one video. Now we did break it up into shorter segments, part one, part two, etc. Part one is scrolling above. However, if you want everything into one video, you're in the right spot. Let's take a look. All right, DORs at the Craftsman Workstation now, and on the left-hand side on the stand is our upper unit. Hey, if you're joining us from the previous videos where we've rebuilt the entire upper unit, so happy to have you. If you have not checked those out, definitely check out the links down below in the comment section as well as the description section. A lot of helpful videos on rebuilding that upper unit. However, what we've done is we have shifted the upper unit schematic paperwork to the side and placed the lower unit schematic paperwork. And we are going to follow this to the T. To the right side on the lower unit stand, there is our lower unit. We are going to begin the project. At this point, I've repositioned the lower unit and stand as shown here. And DIYers, I am referencing my exact serial number service manual and following the exact disassembly or rebuild steps. If yours is different, I highly recommend following your specific service manual. And with that said, we'll start with this shaft here. This is our drive shaft and you've got your prop shaft down below. And right here are your splines, and this little machine cutout is for a rubber O-ring. And if you take your lower unit apart from your upper unit and you're missing an O-ring, chances are it could be stuck in your vertical gear that is inside your upper unit. And for your convenience, here is our old vertical gear that came out of our upper unit during the rebuild process, and that part right there feeds on right there. The O-ring might be in there. However, what I recommend is just get a replacement O-ring. They're probably less than $2. From here, I've got a couple sockets, a 1 half, a 7 16 and a 5 16 to remove the nuts and hardware from the upper housing. Getting a little closer, and here is the half inch. I will remove this half inch nut first, and it should be very friendly to come off. You should not have to really tug at it. Do your best not to drop these. That would not be good. And it looks like it is a nut and a washer carefully remove those and there it is from here let's remove the two seven sixteenths nuts and just like the half inch the two seven sixteenth nuts have washers go ahead and remove both the nut and washer careful again try not to drop them and lose them and to the back side to remove that second seven sixteenths nut and washer Next, the little 5 16 bolt. Careful as you maneuver the socket in place. You may not be able to get a socket on it. You may need to revert to a wrench due to the shape and clearance of the housing. However, be patient and careful with it. Do not strip it unless you're replacing this 5 16 bolt altogether. And it's coming loose pretty easily. And there is what that one looks like. Very unique. From here, we can carefully remove the water tube. It should just pop right out and this acts as a guide. Set these aside. Next, direct your attention to the upper portion of the water pump housing where it meets the bottom portion of the shaft, and your setup may have a rubber O-ring or seal here. If it does, carefully shift it up the shaft and over the splines and off, and from here, we can carefully shift the upper water pump housing up. Just carefully rock it back and forth, and it comes right up and off. There's the inside, and what I recommend is take a picture of the impeller and how it is positioned as far as the fins or blades. We have to insert the new impeller the exact same way so it rotates properly for proper cooling of your engine. After setting the top portion of the housing aside, you've got this key on the lower portion of your shaft. Carefully remove that. That's all it looks like. Do not drop it or lose it. Set that in a safe location. After that, we will carefully remove this upper gasket and you may need to use both hands to get it over the thread. Might get bound up, but that came off pretty easily. Next, you have a metal plate gasket. You've got these little tabs here. You gotta pull this up and over those tabs and rock it back and forth and up and off. And when it comes time to reinstall that, take note of that little indent right there and this little part right there, that little notch or cutout that's circular. That goes in that bottom portion there. Next, the bottom gasket. And if you rip these, no worries, because you should get replacement gaskets in your kit. And 
at this point DIYers, we have now gained access to the lower base of the water pump housing. And in most cases, when you are doing an impeller replacement, you do not replace the lower base of the housing. However, if you buy a full replacement kit, it will come with a base. So with that said, for your convenience, we are going to continue and remove that base. Coming to the back side, and what we need to do is separate the lower base from the gasket down below. A couple ways to do this. I've grabbed some cardboard here. And the last thing you want to do is scratch or dent any portion of your lower unit case or shell. And right here, I'm going to carefully position those pieces of cardboard. I've got a long Craftsman flathead. I will place the screw tip underneath the portion of the base that the long 5 16th screw or bolt goes into. And I'll just carefully tap it and separate that base from the lower gasket. Looks like we've made progress. From here, I just got some pliers and I'll carefully continue rocking that base back and forth and pulling up on that base to pull it up and off the shaft. I may need both hands. And as you just saw, this base was holding on for dear life. However, those pliers came in very handy. Just shift the base up and off and set that aside and we will carefully remove the lower gasket gets caught up on the thread. The base is now fully removed and here is a closer top view of what's underneath the base of the water pump housing. And continuing on with part one, we are going to shift our direction to the lower prop shaft and continue removing the prop shaft, bearing carrier, and all the internal gears. At this point, I've got the lower unit resting on the stand on the larger Craftsman workbench, and the stand is perfect for stationary use. Basically, in other words, when the lower unit is removed from the upper unit and just resting on the stand and not being touched. However, with our continued steps in our project, we may be tugging at it pretty aggressively, hopefully not, but possibly with that tool right there to remove the retainer nut and using the puller jaws to remove the internal bearing carrier. So what I'm going to do is secure this lower unit to the stand much more firmly by use of tie straps. I'll show you the end result. And here's what I've done. Again, I used a tie strap. I also used one single bungee cord and protecting that lower skag at all times. Did my best to secure the lower unit to the stand without allowing any of the tie strap nor the bungee cord to touch that skag. Any additional pressure on that skag, you could actually damage it, and that's not what we want. And you will notice right back there, again, the tie strap is not touching the skag. And coming up top, here's where I've got the tie strap looping over and protecting the surface up top. I used a piece of cardboard and again, just tightened it right here. And that is on there pretty firmly. From here, what I'm going to do is spray some PB Blaster, allow it to sit overnight and hopefully loosen up any corrosion or rust inside this lower unit and the retainer nut. I went ahead and placed some paper towel and I'm going to remove the thrust washer. Set that aside. And I'm going to not overdo it. No need to get messy. However, I want to spray in between the gap of the retainer nut and the casing of the lower unit. And you'll notice it kind of flows downward, which is good. I may give it a couple more sprays over the next couple hours. And again, let it sit overnight and we will attack this in the morning. And actually, while we wait, I want to talk about these little machine circle cuts or indents into the retainer nut. These are machine cut by the manufacturer and these act as drill points. In the event that you cannot remove retainer nut or loosen it using that tool, they give you specific drill points to drill into and weaken the crown or retainer nut to allow you to chip it and break it into a couple pieces and remove it. And by giving you those drill points, it helps alleviate you from damaging the thread that's on the inner portion of this case. In addition, You've got a locking tab that we need to use a flathead screwdriver and bend down and backwards or rearward away from us and out of the way of the rotation of the retainer nut. And that is going to allow us to unscrew the retainer nut. And I'll try to give you a good view of this as I do it. Again, insert the flathead screwdriver, carefully apply some pressure and shift that tab down. And it went down just a bit. What I'll do is grab some pliers here. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but this is how I'm doing it. It's coming down slowly, but surely. Quick update, I actually had to grab some muscle. I grabbed the two pound tecton and I'm going to position the screwdriver on the tab and just do a couple friendly taps. From here, let's take a closer look of the tab itself. And as you can see, it is behind or pushed back and out of the way from the rotation of that retainer nut. All right, DIY is back with you. We let it sit overnight and a couple tools. We've got a ratchet and socket, 11 16th size, got a rubber mallet, and we've got a Craftsman impact wrench or gun, just in case we may or may not need that. 
and that tool. I'll reposition the camera and try to remove that retainer nut. Again, verify your locking tab on the tab washer is pushed back and out of the way of the rotation of the retainer nut. This tool has these little teeth on it. Carefully slide it onto the shaft without damaging the splines. And there it is, in and locked. And I will use the 11 16 and I will begin giving it some friendly taps with the rubber mallet. And DIYers, as you can see, that retainer nut is holding on for dear life. From here, I'm going to transition to the impact gun. Let's give it a try. And as you just saw, as we're doing this, the lower unit and stand are shifting. So I just shifted it back in place and we'll give it a couple more seconds on the impact. Well, DIYers, like I just said, it is hanging on for dear life, and we're going to have to drill. I'm using my Craftsman drill, and I've got the 964 bit. I'll reposition the camera and start drilling. And again, you have specific drill points per the service manual of the manufacturer. And we are going to start at the bottom. And again, as you do this, do your absolute best to drill in the dead center of that circle and stay away from the thread of the inner portion of this lower unit insert. At this point, we have drilled three holes and we are going to vacuum up all those shavings. In addition, if you plan on keeping the internal bearing carrier, do your absolute best not to drill into it or drill past the retainer nut. As you saw, I just vacuumed and I stepped it up to a 7 30 seconds drill bit. I'm going to make each of these holes larger. And as I do this, I'm going to be careful that I do not damage or scratch the shaft nor damage the internal thread, as I mentioned. And as you can see, I've made my fourth cut, two on the bottom and two on the top. Instructions say now grab a chisel and chisel it out. Next, I grab the Craftsman chisel. I've got a two pound tecton hammer and I'll do my absolute best to give you a good view of this and protect your internal thread at all times, as well as the shaft and the internal bearing carrier. That's if you are reusing that. In our case, we are not, so it doesn't matter for us. And line it up in the center. At this point, I've worked with all four holes, and there are additional holes in the event that you want to drill. But we are now going to kind of play with the prongs throughout the inner side of the retainer nut and begin tapping or chiseling to break it loose. I switch to a smaller flathead screwdriver. And again, just be careful. Protect that thread. All right. And to the retainer nut. And from here, we are going to grab a pick tool and remove the inner locking ring. Nothing fancy, just a pick tool from my local AutoZone. Grab one of the teeth and it should just come right out. There it is. Take a lot of photos as you remove all your parts. And a close up with the inner locking ring removed, what we'll do next is hook up the polar jaws and remove that bearing carrier. Next, I took a few minutes and cleaned the workbench up. Here is the box and part number for the puller that's going to pull the bearing carrier. Down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, is a link to purchase this. What we'll do is open up the box and show you what it looks like. Here it is out of the box. There are four parts, and as you can see, it just slides on the top brace or mid brace, and then you've got that long bolt. And this right here, you can see the shape of it. And depending on how your bearing carrier is positioned will depend on which way the puller teeth or jaws at the very end or tip will be positioned on the middle brace there. Next, I spent a minute and screw that large bolt through the upper brace. And the very tip of it is a ball bearing. And that is going to go right in the tip of the propeller shaft. 
And again, the position of your jaws will depend on your bearing carrier. In our case, 1989, we have a later style Alpha 1. The jaws or teeth will be facing to the outer portion of the lower unit. I'll set it up and show you what it looks like. Here it is just prior to going into position and being tightened down. And again, the large bolt, the upper brace here, and these slide. And on the back side are little indents for your screws to screw into and secure each of these jaw legs. Puller is now in position inside the carrier as well as on the propeller shaft. Very important when you are inserting these legs, the teeth at the very tip must be 100% flush with the inner portion of the carrier. In our case, because we have a later style facing outward, yours will be facing inward in the event that you have an earlier style. In other words, don't just have the teeth halfway on because when you begin cranking this with your ratchet, once it gets to a certain pressure, it will snap right off and that would not be good. And these right here, 7 16th bolts or screws. And again, they go into a little slot right there. From here, I'll grab my half inch and I'll push that in and secure it. And DIYers, just go slow, be patient. No need to rush this. And it's probably gonna make a bunch of weird noises as it begins to loosen and come out. And if this method does not work, I may need to grab the impact wrench. Quick update, not sure if you heard that as I was tightening the puller to actually crack the outer portion of the carrier. So I took the puller off, I'm going to apply some heat, reposition the puller, and possibly shift to the impact. I applied heat for about five minutes and now I'm going to use my Craftsman impact. We'll see what happens. And another update, as you can see, it's not going well, but we'll continue. We got to get that out. All right, DIYers, here we go again. I'm going to transition back to the ratchet. Another update, the upper portion or top left portion just cracked. I'm actually going to collapse or break these portions of the carrier and chip away at the outer surface of the carrier. And then I'll be able to carefully rock the shaft back and forth and hopefully break loose the rear portion of the carrier. And coming in, I've drilled two 732nd holes. I'm going to chisel that away and collapse that portion of the carrier. And as I do this, I will again be very careful not to damage the inner thread. I now have a hole cut on the left-hand side as well as down below, and I will continue chiseling that outer ring of the carrier out. We are making significant progress. As you can see, we are destroying that carrier, but hey, we have to DIYers to get that out. A plus to the Craftsman drill and drill bits. They destroyed that thing. And there it is so far. Look at all that. I'm going to clean up and continue. All cleaned up once again and bent some screwdrivers and broke one in the process. Check that out. And there's the front portion or top portion of the carrier closest to the prop. And DIYers, this is the absolute worst case scenario, literally. And in a way, I'm actually glad this happened because, hey, I get to show you the worst case scenario. And I'm going to come inside the carrier. And deep inside there, again, it is very corroded, very rusted. We're going to spray some PB Blaster, let it sit overnight. Thought I'd give you a view of the inside. All PP blastered up. Again, very rusted and corroded. We need to allow this to sit overnight. All right, it is now the next morning and I had enough. I threw it in the garbage. No, I'm just joking. Here's what I did. I took the upper unit off the stand here, placed it in a safe location, and I actually had to reinstall the water pump and impeller. 
to allow me to build pressure with my hand pump pressure kit there. I'll show you that here shortly. And I've got a rubber portion over the oil feed line and a C clamp and a piece of rubber down in between the lower portion of the lower unit here and the C clamp. And without connected to the upper unit, the lower unit standing on this stand gets a little squirrely, so I use tie straps to secure it. I'm going to reposition it up and continue the project. Now up on the workbench here, and I just want to show you the connection fitting, basically where you connect the gear oil to fill the lower unit. And as far as this hand pump kit, the link scrolling above right now will give you a better description of this. However, I do have five pounds of pressure right now. Pressure release, I will release it. And all I'm going to do now is fill it up between 20 and 30 to add some pressure to the backside of that carrier to help push it out. You can see it begin to register. And again, we're adding pressure to the backside of the carrier to hopefully help push it out. All right, right now it is at 25 pounds. Here's a view inside, and as you can see, the rear portion of the carrier, it is beginning to bubble, so that's a good sign. And before I start aggressively trying to move this propeller shaft to break it loose, I'm going to apply heat to the backside of the carrier. From here, I really don't have much to lose. I have to get that carrier out, and I will be replacing the propeller shaft, so we're just gonna bang away. Back to the inner portion of the lower unit, and that is the upper rear portion of the carrier, and the hitting with the hammer tends to be paying off. And I can hear some air coming, so that's good. We'll keep at it. And I continue for about five to 10 minutes trying to shift that shaft back and forth to loosen it, but unfortunately, no luck. And I try the puller once again, no luck. From here, I may not have any other option but to drill the back portion or inner portion or base of the carrier. However, before that, I'm going to release the pressure because once I drill the back side of that carrier, I won't have any chance or way to pressurize it. Might as well remove this. Yep, DIYers, here we go. How fun is this? And do your best not to touch any portion of the thread as well as the case. After about 10 to 15 minutes of drilling, I've got five holes and I'm going to chisel that portion away and a lot of metal shavings. Look at that. And are you ready for an update? I've been at this for about an hour and a half and look at all those aluminum shavings from the internal or rear portion of the carrier. And those are the pieces that I actually had to chisel out. And here's what I've come to realize. This lower unit, as well as upper unit, basically the entire outdrive experienced some pretty heavy overheating. And as I was rebuilding the upper unit, this is the water pocket cover. And as you can see, it is badly melted. And that is a part that assists in the cooling of your engine and basically ties into the upper water tube for your impeller and water pump. So as I was trying to remove this, what I realized is that rear and outer ring of the carrier or base of the carrier basically seized and melted in place to the case, which was terrible. I had to do some serious drilling. And again, it took me about an hour and a half. And basically what I did was made several drill points or holes. And let me scroll in here. Here's a closer view of the upper portion. What I was doing was drilling holes as close to each other as possible and then using the flathead screwdriver and hammering out the inner portion here. And that basically created a gap where I can then insert the flathead screwdriver driver here, give it a couple taps, and it would break this free from the case. And as you can see, I've begun to tackle this side here, and on the other side, it's completely gone. And now what I've noticed is I have broke it loose. The oil is coming out and I did drain the oil, but there might be just a little bit left in there. And now back to the original plan of just kind of carefully rocking the shaft back and forth. And I do see that the carrier now is completely loose on the back. And unfortunately, of course it's not coming out by hand. I may have to re-secure the puller. And you wanna know something funny? I'm actually glad I have to re-secure this puller so it makes me feel like I did not waste my money. And it is coming out now.
and there is the rear gear. I'm just catching all this oil right now, or gear lube, with the towel. Next, I placed a cup to catch the remaining gear lube that is going to leak out of the lower unit. You can see the clutch dog, additional gears, including your pinion gear. And here it is. And these parts right here, basically, were the parts that I chipped away. And these were basically corroded and melted to the inner portion of the case. And this was one of the hardest, actually let me rephrase that, this was by far the hardest part that I had to remove from a boat or jet ski over the years. That was not fun, but we are rebuilding the entire unit, so we had to do it. And again, you've got the gear on the back side. All of this will be brand new. As far as your gear, chances are you are not replacing it. Double check all the teeth, check the overall condition of the gear, and again, all the teeth. And look at that, total destruction. I don't know how many holes I had to cut, but a lot. Look at the condition of this carrier. Inside here, our bearings, those will be replaced with the new carrier as well as the oil seals. And again, look at that. That was not fun. This part right there, that is the top portion that unfortunately I could not get a drill to, but in the end, I didn't need it. So with that said, DIYers, we're making progress, but hey, we've got a long way to go. And we've got some additional tools we'll talk about. Here's some part numbers. On the left-hand side, you've got 89-101-18. That is our retainer wrench that slides over the drive shaft. And then you've got that upper spline area. And we are going to use this little drive shaft nut adapter to slide on the splines. And then this has to do with the internal pinion gear nut. And that is a B69-5248. Down below in the comments section as well as description section are more info on where to purchase these parts. Coming to the top of the lower unit again, there is the drive shaft and it feeds all the way into the actual drive shaft retainer nut and into the lower portion of the unit. And you can see the word off with a arrow pointing counterclockwise to loosen. However, right behind that is our shift shaft. And before moving on, we wanna verify that the entire lower unit and gear settings are in the neutral setting. In other words, not in forward gear nor in reverse gear. And in our case right now, it is in gear. So we are going to come up top and shift it counterclockwise away from the gear, come down below, and the propeller shaft is in neutral, not in reverse nor forward. Next, we need to open some parts. We're going to open the adapter nut and retainer wrench. At this point, I've got the parts unpackaged, and I do want to show you one thing. Inside the lower case, you can see the upper pinion gear and nut. You can see the propeller shaft feeding through the clutch dog, and then that gear. And as I spin this, Nothing's moving. It is now safe to continue. What we'll do next is grab the retainer wrench and there is the shape of it. It's got a half inch connection for a ratchet. We are going to carefully shift this up and slide it over the drive shaft. And all the way down to the retainer nut and we will align it properly as shown here. What I'll do next is grab my half inch socket. Next I'll grab that adapter and carefully align the splines and shift it onto the drive shaft splines as shown here. And taking a step back, here is how we have everything configured at this point. We need to loosen up that retainer nut two to three times only. Any more than that will disrupt the project. I reposition the camera and everything is ready to go. I'm gonna grab the lower unit with my left arm and hand to support it and try to loosen this retainer nut with my right hand and arm with the ratchet. And it might be tough. Yep, mine is and that's not coming loose. So I'm going to grab my rubber mallet and give it a couple friendly taps. And she's loose. From here again, reference that word off and the arrow, and I'm going to turn two to three times. I'll probably do two. There's one. There's two, and maybe I'll go two and a half. Right there. Feeding off the top portion of the lower unit, we are going to go inside the lower unit at this point. And as you can see, again, you've got the propeller shaft feeding into the clutch dog. Directly above that is your pinion gear on top, and below that right there is your pinion gear nut. And we need to remove that. And I've opened up this part right here. You'll notice it has MC1 and MR. And the third one is also MR. And ours is, again, Alpha 1 Gen 1, and our specific serial number is an MR. In addition, I've got our new bearing carrier. We will need that. Most people use the old one. However, unfortunately, again, ours is destroyed and not able to be used. And I have a big 32 inch socket here and that is going to feed up and onto that right there. And I am going to carefully, 
Again, the MR in our case will be in the direction and basically mating with the pinion gear nut. I'm going to carefully without damaging anything, slide this over the propeller shaft and down the shaft and over the clutch dog. And what I'll have to do is pull up on the drive shaft to properly seat that tool on the pinion gear nut. I definitely do not want to leave this part out. I actually grabbed some gear lube and lubricated the entire inner portion here because your entire clutch dog is going to slide into this area right here. And if your clutch dog is not lubricated with gear lube, it'll be a tight fit. So again, an important step. So again, I'm going to carefully pull up on the drive shaft up here. And as I do that, I'm going to look deep into the lower unit and slide this tool onto the retainer nut. Let's go back inside the lower unit. And I want to show you the tool in place. As you can see, you basically can no longer see the pinion gear nut. And if I go up top and rotate the drive shaft, it is locked in place. In addition, it's important to ever so slightly adjust the drive shaft to align that pinion gear nut in a position where you can efficiently slide that tool in place and lock that nut and gear as well as shaft in place. Next, I grabbed our brand new bearing care. I actually lubricated the internal oil seals with the same gear lube as I did with the internal adapter or pinion gear tool. And that will come in handy because this actual propeller shaft gets to a point where it bevels up and is larger in diameter. And when the oil seals meet that point, you will have to give it a little bit of friendly force to shift the bearing carrier up onto that larger diameter portion of the shaft. And we are doing this for two reasons. Number one, it's going to help support and stabilize the propeller shaft. And number two, it's going to help keep the actual tool properly aligned and secured to that pinion gear nut. And we are going to install the bearing carrier backwards. And there's the point where it meets. And again, just a little bit of friendly force. I'll support the back portion. And she is in and flush and mating with the tool. From here, we'll go up top and loosen up the drive shaft. However, I do want to show you a close-up view of where we are at this point. And we are going to come up top and I've got that big socket on the spline adapter. And we are not going to turn the retainer nut. We are only going to turn the shaft. Coming up top, no need to rush this step. Be precise and patient. And I've got my half inch ratchet here. I'm going to shift this up onto the 32 inch socket. And counterclockwise, we are going to loosen that pinion gear nut. And it may be on there pretty good. I've got my left arm and hand supporting the lower unit. And yes. Wow, that's on there tight. I may need to grab my rubber mallet and give it some friendly taps. And I think it's loose. I'm going to reposition the lower unit and stand. Straighten it back out. Double check down below. Everything still looks good. And I'm going to, again, counterclockwise, remove that pinion gear nut. And it basically came to a stop. I'm going to take out the ratchet and socket. Carefully remove the bearing carrier. Set that aside. Coming back inside and as you can see there is a large separation between the pinion gear and the nut itself. From here we are going to remove this pinion gear nut tool and as you pull this out again that clutch dog is in the internal portion of this tool and when shifting the tool outward the clutch dog will shift out with the tool until it meets the stopping point on the propeller shaft. At that point you need to give it some friendly jolts to remove this tool from the clutch dog. And again supporting the lower unit and giving the tool some friendly jolts to shift it off the inner clutch dog. There we go. Back inside, and as you can see, as I rotate the propeller shaft and the clutch dog, the pinion gear nut is completely removed from the drive shaft's thread. And I'll basically have to just kind of maneuver the propeller shaft in a way to give me the clearance to pull that nut out. And I may also have to pull up on the drive shaft above. Back to the workbench and there it is, the pinion gear nut, and it had a washer that was placed in between the nut and pinion gear itself. And in our case, it didn't happen this way, it should. In most cases, you should use this tool to again lock this nut in place and rotate the drive shaft counterclockwise to a point where you can basically remove this tool and the nut itself will come out with it. And you can just pull it out of the tool. However, again, in our case, it didn't happen, but it was extremely easy to remove after removing that tool. It was already separated from the thread. Back inside the lower case, and at this point, it is a good time to shift the clutch dog forward toward the forward gear to give you better clearance to remove that upper pinion gear. Back to the top, we are going to remove the adapter socket, set that aside, and we are now going to continue loosening up the retainer nut, and I can do this by hand without the actual half-inch ratchet. Once you get it all the way unscrewed from the thread, go ahead and remove your wrench. Set that in a safe location. And I just have a little pick tool. I'm just going to put this in carefully and pull up on the retainer. 
as shown here. And there it is. Retainer nut even has the part number on it, which is cool. We'll set that aside. And down below, you have a bearing that seats into a carrier or bearing cup, whatever you want to call it. And we can carefully pull up on the drive shaft to remove it from the lower unit. Wow, it's in there really tight. There we go. There's the carrier, there's the bearing, and there's the lower spline and thread that feed through the lower pinion gear. I'll set that in a safe location. And to a closer view of the lower unit portion that the drive shaft slides down and into, as you can see down below, that is the pinion bearing that the drive shaft slides through, as well as the pinion gear. And what we'll do is we will now go down below and inside the lower unit and again, push that clutch dog back and rotate the pinion gear. And as you saw, just by shifting the propeller shaft to the left and slightly up and down for a bit, there's the pinion gear right there. Very lubricated, which is a good thing. And overall, it's in good condition. I'll set that right next to the drive shaft. Coming back to the propeller shaft, the actual manual does state to shift the propeller shaft to the left portion of the case, which will allow the rear side of that gear disconnect and loop around the inner shift crank. And you can just pull this out carefully. It's not coming out, do not tug at it. And it's kind of heavy. And there it is, the rear bearing and forward gear. And again, there is the clutch dog. And to the back side here. And back inside and to the rear i'll scroll in there there is our inner shift crank we will now at this point go up to the top portion of the lower unit and begin removing the hardware that will allow us to remove the shift rod or shift shaft and that is right here as you can see so what i'll do from here is go get the shift shaft bushing tool and continue the project and here it is 89-101-07 and down below in the comment section as well as the description section is a link on where to purchase this however this is the shift shaft bushing and it didn't cost much. Let's go and open it. And here it is. Very shiny. And this is a three quarters inch size. We've got a three quarters inch socket into an extension into our ratchet. Back up top. And again, this is the top portion of the shift shaft, basically the shift shaft bushing. And you can see those two little cutouts there. That is where that tool is going to be able to slide in place. And those teeth on the tool will lock into the bushing and allow us to remove it. And here's the splines of the shift shaft. However, before that, we actually have to remove that washer down there sorry to get in your way because with that washer installed you can't actually get that shift shaft tool in those grooves from here i'll carefully slide the bushing tool in place and the teeth are down in these slots as you can see we will now use the ratchet socket and extension to loosen up this bushing and if it's like everything else with our lower unit it is going to be on there very firmly and yes it is and DOR's, as you saw, after trying to muscle it and use the rubber mallet, it did not budge. I'm going to use some PB Blaster here and carefully spray the bushing. And I'm going to let that sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. All right, back at it. We waited about 30 minutes. We also need to remove this rubber gasket here. You can remove this at the step when you remove that metal washer. We just forgot. I got a little pick tool. And in our case, we will be replacing this. So it's not a big deal if we harm it, but we need it off. And there it is. Back down below and again another look at the actual internal shift crank. And the bottom portion has a hole and connects onto a tab. And the top portion of the shift crank goes into the spline portion of the lower shaft. And as we pull that shaft up and out, your crank may fall or it may stay in the standing up position on that lower tab. Next, reinsert your tool, align the teeth, and let's try to loosen this. Nope, on to plan B. Plan B, I'm using my Craftsman Impact Wrench and I'm going to apply some friendly jolts. And it is loose. Now going back to the ratchet. And it is coming out very nicely. And it looks like it's up. I'll go ahead and remove the tool. And I should just be able to pull up on the entire shift shaft and bushing. There we go. 
There's the lower spline. Now let's go down below and remove the inner crank. I just want to show you the threaded insert that the bushing and shaft feed into. Back down below, and as you can see, in our case, the crank stayed in the upright position on that tab. I'll reach my arm and hand in there, lift up on the crank, and shift it over that tab and pull it out. There is the spline portion that again goes over the bottom spline portion of the shaft, and the bottom portion of the crank does not have any splines. Set that aside, come back inside real quick. I want to show you one more thing. You see a tab sticking up just to the left of that lower tab that the crank came off of, and that is your drain port screw. Just wanted to share that with you. Not sure if it's helpful or not. However, back to the table. And again, here's the metal washer and rubber washer that we removed on the top portion of the bushing. And down below is an O-ring, an additional washer. We are going to install all brand new parts. Picking up right where we left off, again, we are going to remove the pinion gear bearing. Let's take a closer look and get started. On the left-hand side, you see our drive shaft as well as our pinion gear, our shift shaft and crank. And there's the inside of an empty lower unit. On the right-hand side, there is our propeller shaft. And it's got the clutch dog as well as forward gear. And again, in this video, we are going to replace the internal pinion bearing. And there are the tools. On the left-hand side, that is the removal tool. And on the right-hand side, that is the install tool. Now let's go up top and show you the actual pinion bearing inside the drive shaft cavity, as you can see here. And again, this is where the drive shaft shifts down into and goes through the bearing, as well as the lower pinion gear, and is secured with the pinion gear nut. Now let me scroll in. And in our case, we have 18 needle bearings. I just wanted to show you a close-up view of the current pinion bearing installed we are now going to remove it and back to the tools again on the left hand side is the removal tool however we need that washer removed from the install tool and we'll do that right now washer is now removed and back to the driver rod and driver you can see some visible thread it is extremely important to screw that driver all the way on that driver rod until it is properly secured and tight and no visible thread is showing at this point i've repositioned the lower unit to the floor because we are going to be doing some pounding with that hammer on that drive and i wasn't interested in doing that on top of the workbench so from here we are going to insert that driver and rod inside that cavity of the lower unit and in position inside the bearing and diyers it is extremely important to have all of your bearings installed and present during the removal process. If you are missing a needle, add some grease to it and reposition it inside the bearing. Again, all needles must be present during the removal process. And I am going to do my absolute best to give you a good view of this, but it will be tough. Again, ever so gently insert the driver and rod to the internal cavity and shift it in position inside the bearing. And you may have just heard that. We actually had a few needles fall out and we grabbed our two four seat grease. We're going to grease up these needles and reinstall them. Carefully pull the needles out of the lower unit and I'll do one at a time, as you can see. And I've got some two four C on my finger. I'll just lubricate the needle. And now let's reinstall them. Next, I ever so slightly grease the needle bearings that these are going to go up against and carefully shift this in place and roll it and now I'll use my finger to push these two bearings apart and I'll install the last one and the last needle bearing coming in shift that into place and from here I'll just make sure that all the needles are properly seated and if any look out of place just carefully grease it and push it back into place and back to it as you shift this rod and driver down the cavity try to align it and go slow be precise and I am in position. Let me give you a better look here. And here's a better view of it. Do your best to center the driver on the needle bearings. From here, I'll reposition the camera and hammer this bearing out. However, do not forget your washer. Before we start banging at this rod, we want to carefully shift the washer onto the rod and down the rod and into the actual bearing cup cavity. And again, this is going to help stabilize the rod as we hammer it. And a close-up of the washer shifted down inside the bearing cup or cavity, and that rod is much more stabilized and ready to be hammered. And DIYers, no need to rush this. Be precise and patient. Take a look down below and verify it is removed and carefully shift up and remove the rod, washer, and driver. Set that in a safe location. I now have the lower unit and stand on the workbench. Let's take a closer look inside. 
and you can see all the needle bearings and it looks like the carrier came out in a few different pieces we are going to now pull all the needle bearings out as well as the carrier and again all i'm doing now is retrieving all of the needle bearings as you can see right here again there's 18 of them make sure you get all 18 out if your outdrive has that number and be mindful as you shift all of these parts out you do not want to scratch or score any portion of that inner case where the gears and clutch dog go and yes there's the carrier and it broke so i have to verify all the parts come out There's another part. And there are a lot of needles. And it looks like a couple needles are really deep into the inner portion of the case and in the cavity where your drain port screw is. And now to a close up of all the needle bearings and carrier. Again, 18, we've got five, 10, 15 on the lower right and three making 18 needles and i've also retrieved all of the broken parts of the carrier i am going to rebuild it to ensure that we have every single part that broke off of that larger portion and here's the update i took a few minutes gathered all the broken parts and i rebuilt the carrier and as you can see there are some cracks right here there were three little pieces on top and then there was a large piece you can see the large crack here and this is the bottom portion of the carrier that gave way However, there was still enough grip on the present needles and the driver to remove it. In DIYers, this is an extremely important step to ensure you have every single piece of this carrier in the event that you break it. Really, for two reasons. Number one, when it comes time to reinstall the new bearing, you do not want any of the old bearing inside that cavity that will cause havoc on the install process. And number two, in the event that you leave any of those little pieces inside the lower unit, when it comes time to put everything back together and add the gear lube and turn the engine on, any little pieces of this metal will destroy your inner gear and you do not want that. Taking a step back to wires from here, we actually have to do some maintenance to the inner case. As I was removing that bearing carrier right there, it gave us a heck of a time. And unfortunately during that process, I made some drill gouges and scores in the inner case. And usually that's not that big of a deal. However, the position of those gouges or scoring are in line with the rubber O-ring that goes on the back portion of the bearing carry and creates that water and oil tight seal. Ultimately keeping water out of the gear case and the gear lube and oil inside the gear case to keep the gears properly oiled and lubricated. And in the event that you are curious and interested in watching us fix those gouges, definitely check out the link scrolling above. We will do that, and we will then come right back to this video and complete the install of the new bearing. We are back with you in DIYs. That project went well. And to a sneak peek of the inner case, as you can see, no more drill gouges. You can still see where the JB Weld filled in the gouges. We repainted it. And we are very happy with how this turned out. And there is the new pinion bearing. We'll unwrap that. And here is the tool we are going to use. At first glance, it may look a little intimidating, but once we get this all set up and installed on the lower unit, you will see how awesome this tool is. Back to the lower unit, going back inside. And before moving on to the next step, the inner cavity where the bearing itself will be shifted into and put in place, we have to ensure that it is 100% clean of all debris before we move on. Some people use rubbing alcohol. However, whatever you use to clean out that cavity where the pinion bearing will be installed, just make sure it's 100% clean. After spending a couple minutes and cleaning the internal cavity, go ahead and unwrap your new bearing. And you'll notice the top end says this side up and you see all the needle bearings and they are properly greased. In addition, you see a part number and that inner cardboard piece must stay in during the entire installation procedure. And that actually has a name, that is a cardboard shipping sleeve. And it assists in keeping all of those needle bearings in place and not falling out as you use that tool to install it. And to a quick overview of the tool itself, it may look like a lot of parts, but it's not really a lot of parts. You have a long threaded puller rod that goes through a nut, a washer, a thick plate, a pilot washer, and down at the very bottom is your bearing installation tool. And right now it's installed backwards or upside down. When it comes time to install that bearing, it will be flipped the opposite direction. And for your convenience, I am going to place all the part numbers to this tool down below in the comment section as well as description section. Back to the lower unit. Let's get this thing installed. I change camera angles. I'll grab the tool. Be careful. The washer, plate, and small washer all move freely. I'll shift those up flush with the nut. And from here, I'll just unscrew the bottom portion here. And I'll carefully set that aside. And there's the tool in relation to the bearing. And again, 
this side up. This actually has a smaller machine cut than the bottom side, and that is to assist in this bearing race or carrier itself to be able to shift into that cavity in a friendlier manner. And I will carefully shift the tool into that center cardboard portion, and there it is. Next, coming to the top portion of the lower unit, and that is your drive shaft cavity. And we are going to carefully shift that tool in place. And in relation to that larger pilot washer, as we shift this rod into this cavity, that larger pilot washer is going to go inside that cavity and properly seat itself at the lower stopping point, as you can see, right inside there. I'll do my best to give you a good view of this. And the rod goes in. Be careful as you shift this rod in. You do not want it to scratch the inner cavity. And from here, just allow that pilot washer to fall into place. And again, that must be flush with the inner stopping point. And I'll show you a better view of it here shortly. And you want to make sure that this is straight and this plate is properly seated as shown here. To a top view real quick. And again, the plate is resting on the top portion of the lower unit. And coming down inside here, you can see the pilot washer deep inside the cavity and resting flush with the stopping point. We are now going to come inside the lower portion of the unit and you can see the threaded portion of the puller rod extending down inside the lower portion and right now the rod might be too far down so we are going to come back up top and screw the threaded rod counterclockwise to raise it and that will allow us to conveniently and efficiently shift this entire portion here into place and align the thread and start installing the bearing. I have raised it and again that is going to give us better clearance to shift the bearing and install tool in place to align that thread and continue the install. However for some people freeze this in our case we're not going to we are actually just going to lubricate it. This is the Mercury Gear Lube SAE90 and this is the exact gear lube or gear oil that you install in the lower unit to properly lubricate the entire outdrive. And all I'm going to do is tip it upside down with the cap on and then I'll unscrew it and I will use the oil that basically attaches itself to the inner portion of the cap to lubricate the carrier. And no need to overdo it, but you do want it to be lubricated. And I'm only lubricating the outer race. I'm not actually putting gear lube inside where the grease is. You wanna keep the two separate. In addition, I'm doing my best not to lubricate the bottom install because that will be the dry portion I grab as I shift the tool and bearing in place inside the lower unit. And again, grabbing the lower portion or the install tool itself, I will carefully shift this inside the cavity. I've got my left arm up on top holding the threaded rod and do your absolute best to align it properly. It may take you 20 to 30 seconds. Just do it right. No cross threading. And once it is aligned, I will carefully turn the install tool counterclockwise so it can grab that thread on the rod itself. And we are in, and it is screwing on extremely efficiently, and that's what you want. If it's hard to turn or rotate, unscrew it, realign it, and try again. And to a close-up where we're at right now, you can still see the threaded portion of the puller rod, and then the lubricated or gear-oiled bearing, and then the install tool at the base. And this part you want to do by hand, you want to screw that bearing up into the cavity as straight as possible possible before shifting to the actual wrenches and adding force to pull that bearing carrier up into that cavity. And I am doing my best to give you good light. And again, as you screw this install tool on, make sure you are properly aligned up top with the plate resting against the top portion of your lower unit. And once it starts to have a little tension on the top portion, give it a slight friendly jiggle to ensure that you are 100% properly aligned prior to moving on. Back to the top portion, and I want to show you the configuration as shown here. The plate itself is properly aligned, the washer and nut are in place, and the rod is straight up and aligned as possible. And the top portion here is cut, and you can use a 10 millimeter wrench. And as I do this, I'm going to do my best to give you multiple camera angles, showing the procedure up here, as well as watching the bearing itself down below get pulled up and inside the cavity. One last important thing to take into consideration before moving on, make sure that threaded puller rod is at least halfway screwed into that install tool because in the event that it's just screwed in maybe an eighth of an inch and you start adding the force to pull that puller up the rod, it might come unscrewed and fall apart and that's not what you want. To a quick view of the owner's manual steps for our specific serial number outdrive and there is the pictorial image. And in relation to the letters down here, to the parts, and there are all the part numbers right there for the entire tool broken up.
into pieces. Back to the top, I've grabbed my 10 millimeter wrench and I'm going to rotate this clockwise. And you may find it beneficial to hold the bottom bearing install tool for about five to 10 seconds as you rotate this in place and it will get tighter as you screw this on. Again, go slow, be precise, no need to rush this. Coming back up top and DIYers, we are all done and it is resting flush with the inner bore. We are now going to unscrew this puller rod counterclockwise. Next, I'm turning it counterclockwise and it is loose. And I can now basically pull up and I'm going to rotate that nut a few inches up. That should do. And I will continue unscrewing the entire puller rod from the lower install tool. And as I do this, I'm applying upward pressure on the lower install tool so it does not fall out of the bearing and that cardboard sleeve. All right, we are loose. I'm going to carefully shift the entire tool up and out and set that aside. In addition, I will pull out that inner pilot washer as shown here. And now I'll go back down below and pull out the tool. And as you do this, just be careful. Again, you want to keep that cardboard sleeve installed in the bearing. There it is. Coming back inside and I'll try my best to give you a good view of it and I'll scroll in. And again, extremely important that that bearing carrier is flush with the drive shaft cavity bore as shown here. I'm carefully sliding the camera in to give you a much better close up view of the final product. Taking a step back in DIYs, that is it. And when the pressure increased and the tension built as we use that tool to push that bearing up into the cavity. For better leverage, I transitioned to an adjustable wrench there. All right, DIYers, back at the workstation now. And again, this is part four of the lower unit rebuild. And basically right now, the lower unit is a hollow case minus the pinion bearing that we installed in part three. And on the left-hand side are the old parts. There is the new bearing carrier. And we've got several new parts, gears, bearings, seals, etc., as well as shafts. There's our drive shaft, and the propeller shaft is on our table full of new parts. What I'll do now is remove the lower unit and stand to give me more room, and I'll show you the new parts. I'm now in the process of organizing all the new parts, and here is the gear assembly. Well packaged, all the gears and bearings. All right, DIYers, at this point, I've got everything out of the gear assembly box here. And again, this is the OEM Quicksilver 43-878087 Alpha 4. And now I want to discuss the internal parts. We'll start with the reverse gear. And this portion is going to be inside the back portion of your bearing carrier. However, first, this new bearing has to be pressed onto the gear. And that's pretty cool looking. Check that out. And once that's pressed on, again, that will go inside the bearing carrier. And then over here, we have a large rubber O-ring, and that will be installed on this portion or beveled portion of the carrier. And once installed, this is what creates that oil-tight and watertight seal to keep the oil inside the engine and the water out. And real quick, I'll give you the part number on that. Right there. In addition... It comes with this little bearing here. And for us, we just bought a full brand new bearing carrier and already installed are both the two oil seals and the internal bearing, which is this right here. Not sure if you can see it deep in there. I'll give you a closer view of it here shortly. And I'll set that aside. This is the forward gear. And here's the race or carrier. And the old one is still installed in the lower unit. Here is the bearing. 
And this is already factory pressed on, which is awesome. I'll set that aside. And this is your pinion gear. In addition, here is our new bearing and carrier that is going to go onto our new shaft. This is the old shaft, but there is the new part for right here. Again, old shaft, old bearing, old carrier, everything will be brand new. Next, we have the clutch dog and the internal splines. And that's nice. Here is the clutch dog part number. Again, OEM Quicksilver. Set that aside. And one part I forgot to mention, this is the thrust ring that will go on the backside of the bearing carrier when installing the gear. And finally, we have our shift shaft, which is that part right here. And here's the old part in relation. You've got your bushing, the bearing, and a couple washers here. And this will all be brand new. And set that aside. And here is the old shift crank. And here is the part number for the new shift crank. And there they are. Old, new. And back to the old shift shaft and bushing. Here is the new bushing. It already comes with the oil seal pressed in there. And all of this, again, is going to be brand new. We'll set that aside. And up here, you have your pinion gear nut that secures to the lower portion of the drive shaft. And then you have a bunch of shims. And as I mentioned, there is the new drive shaft down there. And the propeller shaft is in that mix of boxes over there. And DIYers, the next couple steps require a factory press, which we don't have. So we talked to our local marina, and we are going to take all of the old parts as well as new parts. And they have a service manual for our exact serial number engine. And they are going to put things together to ensure that they are properly installed to factory specifications. In other words, I'm taking the new gears and bearings and bearing carrier to the local marina, and they're going to put everything back together. And they said it would take about two days, which is great. Gears and bearings are boxed up, ready to go to the local marina. And there again is the clutch dog. That's the new one. I want to show you the old propeller shaft and the old clutch dog as well as the forward gear and bearing and the shifting mechanism and again all of this will be brand new however as promised here is a close-up view of the internal bearing inside the bearing carrier Pretty convenient already having that installed as well as the two oil seals. And this new bearing carrier with everything installed was about $105. One last thing prior to going to the local marina and dropping off the parts, this is our old bearing carrier and it still has the thrust ring and reverse gear installed in it. And again, in our project, we are not using the old gear. However, you may be using the old gear and you will need to remove the gear, thrust ring, and O-ring from the carrier. So for your convenience, scroll above right now is a link to a video and we are going to show you how to remove the parts from the carrier. Definitely check that out. Back from the marina and while we wait for those parts to be put together, we are going to install the new shift shaft, bushing, and internal crank. And first thing we wanna do, come up top, and that is where the shift shaft and bushing will go into. There's the thread and the cavity. And it's a good idea to clean the internal thread and mating surface prior to installing that shift shaft bushing. New parts are organized on the workbench. Again, we have the shift crank, the shift shaft, a couple washers and O-rings, and the bushing. And the only thing I'm using from the old part is that small little clip at the very bottom, as you can see here. So I am going to take apart this bushing to gain access to that clip. Not much to this DIYers, you just carefully shift this up. And again, it has that internal rubber seal and you just shift it off the spline area of the shaft. And you also have the lower washer here and the O-ring is still connected to it. And in a groove that was machined in by the manufacturer is this clip. You just grab it and pull it right off. And there it is. From here, I'm just going to take all the old parts and get them out of here so I don't get anything unorganized. Everything is now unpackaged. I put on some clean new gloves. And again, here's the shift shaft, the shift crank, the bushing. This is the tool we're going to use to secure everything back in place in the lower unit. In addition, we've got that clip, O-ring, rubber seal and two washers and we are going to put this back together first thing we're going to do is grab the clip and align it properly with the machine groove and apply some friendly pressure and install it that is what it looks like next the small washer and we'll just slide that right down flush with the clip and the next thing we need to do is install this rubber o-ring to the bottom portion of the bushing and i'm going to grab some 24c grease as shown here 
And do not overdo this, just a little bit. As you can see, that's all I'm using. And I'll grab the bushing, and I'm basically going to lubricate that little gap in between the threaded portion and the mating surface of the bushing. And after I do this, I'm going to clean out the thread. And I'll wipe my hands clean, grab the O-ring, and carefully shift it onto the bushing, all the way flush into its slot, as shown here. From here, I'll grab a paper towel, and I'll carefully clean out all the thread. I'll set that back down. I'll cap off the grease, set that aside, and from here, I'm going to grab my Mercury Gear Lube SAE90. This is the exact same gear lube you insert in the lower unit. And what I'm going to do with the cap on, obviously, tip it upside down, and then I'm going to unscrew it and just use the oil that is on the inner portion of the cap. And I'll dab it with a finger, and all I'm going to do is lubricate the inner oil seal inside the bushing. And that's it. You can't access it from the bottom, so... That's all you need to do. Do not overdo it. Grab your shift shaft, carefully align this, and once the shift shaft meets the rubber seal, you'll have to apply some friendly pressure. Just like that, all the way flush, as shown here. Now it's time to install it in the lower unit. Before moving on, I want to show you a close-up view of the bushing and O-ring with the grease. Again, no need to overdo it. Next, what we'll do is install the shift shaft crank, and very important, one side has a spline machine groove and cutout, and the other side is completely round with no splines or gear connection feature. And we're going to come inside. Deep inside there, you'll see a little tab sticking up, and behind it to the left is a pin. That's actually your drain port pin or screw, and we're going to shift that crank in place and onto that little tab with the spline machine cut portion of the crank facing up or on top. Not really a good way to give you a view as I do this, but I'm going to carefully shift that crank onto the pin, and you want to ensure that the shift crank itself is facing left or that way as shown here. And I'll even push it. And that is how the manual wants you to align that prior to shifting that actual shift rat down through the cavity and into that spline portion on top of that crank. Taking a step back and we are now going to install the shift shaft and bushing. And as you do this, just carefully shift the entire shaft inside the cavity. And you may need to go down below and use your other arm and hand to carefully shift the crank until you can properly align the splines on both the bottom portion of the shaft as well as the top portion of the crank. Coming to a different camera angle, I wanna show you a top view and you'll see some thread. We are not all the way in, as you can see there. We'll come down below and I'll scroll in. And as you can see, the bottom portion of the crank is still on the pin and the top portion of the crank is properly aligned and secured to the bottom portion of the shaft. Now it's time to secure the bushing. Next part is very important. Our service manual requires 50 pounds to be applied to that bushing as we screw it in tight to the case. I've got my torque wrench here. And as of right now, it is zeroed out. I'm going to turn the handle clockwise until it rotates all the way up to 50. And there it is. As you can see, the top black portion of the handle is flush with the 50 line. The actual line goes to the left of the 5 and shifts downward at an angle and then shifts left to that solid long line that's vertical in between all the numbers. Back up top, grab your bushing tool, align the two bottom teeth with the two open slots on the top portion of the bushing. And from here, I'm just using a three-quarter socket and ratchet, and I'm going to screw this bushing in until I feel some tension. And once I feel the tension, I will shift over to the torque wrench. And there's the tension. And again, to the torque wrench, 50 pounds. And I moved the camera back to give me more room. And no need to rush this. Be precise. And it's getting more and more tight. There it is. You hear that click? That indicates that this bushing is properly set to 50 pounds. Now to a close-up view of the Craftsman torque wrench that we used. Again, 50 pounds was set, as shown here. And let's go back up top. We are going to carefully pull off the bushing tool. 
Set that aside. Next, grab that rubber seal, and we are going to carefully position it over the spline portion of the top shaft and push this as far down into the bushing as we can until it's flush with the top oil seal. Last, the larger washer, as shown there. That is the finished product of the shift shaft and crank. And DORs, that is it. That is the end of part four. DIYers, here we are back at it. Again, this is part five of our full lower unit rebuild, and we just got all our new parts back from the local marina, and we're going to continue the project. To a closer look, and to the left side of the lower unit, there is our old bearing and thrust ring that came out of our old and badly damaged bearing carrier. And there's the new bearing carrier, the gear, and the thrust ring. And again, this is the reverse gear. We'll install that later in the project. However, to the right side of the lower unit, here is our brand new drive shaft and propeller shaft with the bearing, gear, clutch dog, and shift mechanism. We are going to reposition that and lubricate it prior to installing it back into the lower unit. I have now repositioned the entire propeller shaft and there is a closer view of the bearing and the rollers. And that gold piece, again, that is the shift mechanism that your internal shift crank goes into. And that is what moves the entire clutch dog as you shift from forward, neutral, and reverse. Again, this is the forward gear. And it looks like the shop was kind enough to lubricate the splines on the propeller shaft prior to installing the clutch dog. As you can see, it moves very nicely. And when put in forward gear, the shift shaft moves the lower shift crank and it pulls this forward and locks this clutch dog in and spins the forward gear. However, again, we are going to lubricate the bearing. Prior to lubricating the bearing, this is what I'm using. Gear lube SAE90. This is the exact gear lube that we put in the lower unit. So why not lubricate it with the exact gear lube we put in our lower unit? That is going to lubricate the gear and bearings. In DIYs, as I do this, I'm going to do my best not to get in your way so you get a good view of this. And it looks like the shaft lubricated the bearing slightly, which is awesome. However, we're going to lubricate it just a bit more so you can see how we do this. And again, all I'm using is the gear lube that we pump inside the lower unit. And set that aside. And as the gear oil flows out, I'm basically going to rub the roller bearings. And I'll pump just a little bit more. And I'll really allow the gear lube to get inside the bearings and rollers. And yeah, you're gonna get a little messy. Wear some gloves. As you can see, don't pump too much because then it'll get really messy and there is no need to do that. And again, as I work this gear lube inside, I'm rotating the bearings as best I can. And just do this the entire way around. And I'm back to where I started. So I've gone the entire way around the bearing and I'm going to cap this off and shift that aside. And again, without getting dirty, just kind of move the bearing. And that is going to allow the gear loop to work itself into the roller bearings. And don't spin it too fast because you may get gear lube flying out and onto you or onto any surface that you do not want it on. So again, be careful. Time to clean up and install this inside the lower unit. And what I would do next, I would advise to lubricate the splines of the propeller shaft. However, again, it looks like the shop did a very good job on that. We're going to not do that. Coming inside now and to the rear portion of the inner case. Again, that is your shift crank and you want to make sure it is shifted to the left because as we lift up the propeller shaft and shift it into this lower case, this part right here needs to attach or lock onto that shift crank. And the only way to do that per the service manual is having that to the left, for example. Don't have it to the right, have it to the left. Next, I'll grab a flashlight. This is my Browning Buckmark, love that company. Going to turn it on and come up to the drive shaft cavity and rest it in place to hopefully give you a better view of it. And again, this is heavy, so be careful. And just carefully shift this in. And again, the propeller shaft will be shifted to the left of the case to allow that locking mechanism to attach onto the inner crank. And once it's all the way back, 
shift it to the center. I'll carefully let go from here. We need to go inside, double check how it looks, and then we will begin shifting that shift shaft to ensure that that locking mechanism is properly positioned on the shift crank. Coming back inside, there's a better view of it, and so far so good. And DIYers, we're not actually going to cover the shimming process because we did not pull the bearing racer carrier that the bearing on the back side of that forward gear seats into. And in addition, our serial number engine may be different than yours. So it is extremely important to reference your service manual or owner's manual for your exact serial number engine. And with that said, if all looks good down here, what we're going to do is we're going to come up top and we're going to rotate the shift shaft to ensure that the clutch dog inside here shifts back and forth. First thing you want to do is ensure that the propeller shaft itself is as center in the lower unit cavity as possible. Then we'll come up top and shift the shift shaft back and forth to again ensure that the clutch dog shifts back and forth as shown here. And that is exactly how it is supposed to work. Taking a step back and making progress, what we'll do next is install the drive shaft and pinion gear. Here is our drive shaft and bearing, and there is the pinion gear. And there is the pinion gear nut and washer. Let's go ahead and open it. Pinion nut and washer have been removed from the packaging. On the left-hand side is the pinion gear. New washer again. Do not ever use your old washer and then the pinion nut. And let's take a look at the actual nut. It has a machine groove or what's called a shoulder engravement on one side of the nut, as you can see here. If I flip it to the opposite side, there is a slight indent. However, not like this cut. This part is going to mate with the washer and face up and mate with this portion of the pinion gear. Next, I grab the pinion nut adapter tool and I've got the pinion nut and washer. I'm going to carefully slide this in place as shown here, we are going to use the Loctite 271 thread locker on the pinion nut thread. And let's go up top and down inside the drive shaft cavity, you'll see the pinion bearing down there. I'll scroll in. You can see the needle bearings as well as the cardboard sleeve. We are going to leave that in and as we shift the drive shaft down the cavity and inside the bearing, the actual diameter of the drive shaft will push that cardboard sleeve out and then we will retrieve it down below and pull it out. Next, I shifted the adapter tool, pinion nut and washer aside focusing on the drive shaft bearing as well as the lower splines. I've got 2-4-C. I'm going to lubricate the lower splines of the drive shaft. And that is what it looks like. And I'm just going to grab a little and work it into the splines. Do not get any grease on the actual thread where the pinion nut will screw into. And again, do not overdo this. Just apply the grease to the splines, nowhere else. I'll go and cap the grease off, set that aside. We are now going to grab the SAE 90 gear lube. And again, this is the exact gear lube we put in the lower unit. So why not lubricate it with the exact gear lube that we put in the lower unit? We are going to take the cap off and we are going to lubricate the roller bearings on this drive shaft bearing. And just like the grease here, do not overdo it. I'll just apply some friendly pressure to the pump on the cork and you will see the grease come out. Again, just pick the drive shaft up and lubricate those roller bearings and that is lubricated. Coming back up top and carefully lower the drive shaft down the drive shaft cavity and it's making contact with the cardboard sleeve as well as bearing. I'm slowly allowing just the weight of the shaft to push down on that cardboard sleeve to push it out. I'll now go down below with the other hand and pull that sleeve out. Coming back down below and here is where we're at right now. You can see the lower portion of the drive shaft. What we'll do now is carefully insert the pinion gear and align it with the splines. We will need to pull up on the shaft to give the pinion gear clearance and we are not going to push the pinion gear all the way onto that lower spline area. And that's per the service manual. And here is the little cardboard sleeve. With the pinion gear in hand, as you can see here, we are going to shift it inside the lower unit cavity upside down like this. And again, we are going to carefully pull up on the drive shaft to allow this pinion gear to shift in place and align the internal splines. And just be patient. This does not happen within seconds. You have to just carefully align it. And to get better clearance, I shifted the propeller shaft to the left. 
In addition, as I shift that pinion gear down the cavity, I'm wiggling the propeller shaft and that is moving the clutch dog as well to give me more clearance to push that pinion gear into place. Coming back inside and to ensure the pinion gear splines are aligned and in place with the lower drive shaft splines, ever so slightly rotate the drive shaft and the pinion gear and forward gear should rotate. As shown here, that's all I'm going to do. Back to the pinion nut washer and tool, I'm going to apply the Loctite 271 to the pinion nut thread. And do not overdo this. As you can see, it is a red liquid. And here is a close-up of it. Again, do not overdo it. As you can see, what I applied is not dripping out the bottom, which is good. We are now going to shift this adapter tool on the propeller shaft and down the cavity and onto the clutch dog. And I'm going to lubricate the inner portion of this tool because it does go over the clutch dog. And all I'm using is the same gear lube. And don't get any of this lube on the actual nut. I changed camera angles and I'm going to again shift this all the way down onto the clutch dog. I'm going to lift up on the drive shaft. The tool has now made contact with the clutch dog and just some friendly pressure to shift this into place. Coming back inside for a close up, as you can see, the adapter tool is shifted all the way on and securing that nut. And the nut has screwed a few turns onto the lower thread of the shaft. And from here, this is the top bearing race or carrier that is going to go up top on the actual bearing. Next, I've got the new bearing carrier, thrust ring and reverse gear and I'm going to lubricate the inner seals here. We are going to install this bearing carrier backwards, and this is going to do two things. As we talked about in previous videos, it is going to help stabilize the propeller shaft as we tighten the pinion nut on the shaft, as well as apply pressure to the tool to alleviate it from shifting off that nut. And it is in and flush with the tool. Back up top and do yourself a favor, inspect the bearing and shaft inside the cavity, make sure all looks good. We are going to grab the carrier, carefully shift that over the shaft, and do our best to align it as best we can inside the cavity over the bearing. And it rests right in place, flush with the top portion of the bearing. So if it's not going in, carefully pull it up, realign it, and allow it to drop in place. Next, we will grab the retainer and carefully shift that over the shaft and drop it in place. Next to the retainer nut tool, carefully slide that down the shaft. Align the bottom teeth with the retainer, and you'll carefully align the retainer with the thread and screw it hand tight. And it is now hand tight. Now we need to grab the torque wrench and apply 100 pounds to the torque wrench, and we have set it to 100 pounds and zeroed it out right here, as you can see, flush with the 100 line. And we will align this connection to the tool. And we will begin screwing everything tight. And again, 100 pounds. You will know it's at 100 pounds when you have a lot of pressure and this tool makes a clicking sound. I'm going to remove the tool and realign the actual part here to give me better leverage and tool back in place. And 100 pounds is quite a lot. There it goes, as you heard that click. I'm going to immediately remove the torque wrench. To a closer view, we are going to shift this tool off the shaft. And that's what it looks like down in there. From here, we are going to install this adapter on the very top spline, and we are going to torque the lower pinion to between 60 and 80 pounds. Back to the torque wrench, and as of right now, it is set to 60. I'm going to set it to 65. You can see one, two, three, four, five. Now it is set to 65. Coming back up top, I've got a large 32 inch socket. Rest that in place, and again, torque it to 65. And we will know it's at 65 when the torque wrench clicks.
I now feel the tension. There it goes. Immediately remove the torque wrench. Coming closer in DIYers, that took every bit of strength I had. Go ahead and remove this from the upper splines. Set that aside, and we are now going to carefully remove the bearing carrier from the propeller shaft. And as like everything else, just be careful as you pull the bearing carrier out. You don't want to damage anything. And again, those internal seals of the bearing carrier are hugging tight to the propeller shaft. So you may need to give it some friendly pressure or a friendly jolt. Just like that, be careful as you shift this out. You do not want to harm those inner seals. Set that aside. And from here, the internal pinion nut tool has a good grip of that clutch dog. So some friendly jolts to remove this may be required. Just like that. I'll go ahead and clean this up. Coming back inside, I do want to show you the clearance between the pinion gear nut and the clutch dog and propeller shaft. As you can see here, the proper gap in between the two is set. And what I want to do now is go up top and rotate the drive shaft. And you will see the pinion gear and forward gear, as well as clutch dog and propeller shaft all turn. And make sure nothing is binding up and it is rotating freely. And the teeth of the pinion gear are properly set in the forward gear. And coming up top, I do want to show you the finished product of the retainer, the bearing, and the race, as you can see here, properly torqued to factory specifications. And I will rotate the shaft so you can see. It moves freely, as shown here. And DIYers, we still have a lot to do. However, this finishes up part five. All right, DIYers, back at it again. Part six of our lower unit full rebuild. And we're going to pick up right where we left off. Time to install the bearing carrier. And there's our new carrier, reverse gear, and thrust ring. In here is our O-ring, tab washer, and an additional key that we'll use when installing the carrier. Let's get started. Next, I grab the 2-4-C grease. We will need that. I've got the O-ring. Here's the part number. And I'm going to pull this out. Set that aside. There it is. And I need to put this on the beveled or indent portion of the bearing carrier. And it might go on fairly easy this way, but if you're having trouble, you will have to go from the opposite direction. Notice how I push the thrust ring back and just keep this rubber O-ring going over the gears. Do your best not to allow the O-ring to get damaged on the gears. As you can see, I got a little part there. I'll inspect to make sure everything looks good, and it does. And again, flush with the beveled portion of the base of the carrier the whole way around. Set that aside, now it is time to grease. We are greasing the bearing carrier because we are going to slide it down the cavity and in place to match the reverse gear with the pinion gear and clutch dog. And per the service manual, again, we need to grease this carrier. We're going to do both the base of the carrier, the O-ring and the retainer portion. And really get it on there. This is also going to help allow the carrier to be shifted down the cavity in the lower unit a lot more efficiently. In addition, stay away from the gear. Do not get any grease on the gear. If you get grease on the gear, get that off prior to installing it. And the cool thing about the thrust ring, it basically acts as a guard, which is cool. And really get it on there. Also, this grease is going to help this rubber O-ring properly seat deep in the cavity to create that oil tight and water tight seal, keeping the oil and gear lube in and the water out. What I will do now is I'm going to carefully shift the bearing carrier and rest it on the reverse gear because we actually have to grease the inner portion of this oil seal. Again, to help the rubber portion of that seal properly seat on the propeller shaft so it can make that proper seal to keep water out. And inside the carrier, we have a brand new bearing as well with a bunch of needles inside it. That has already been greased, so we're not really going to hit that. But if you have replaced yours and it is not lubricated with grease, use that 2,4 c get that needle bearing lubricated and greased up. There it is. I'll get that off there. Next what I'll do is lubricate this portion of the carrier. From 
here, I'll clean myself up. And to another close up of the carrier prior to shifting it into the lower unit. And this little slot right there, very important, that is where that little key goes. And when installing this bearing carrier, that will go in on the top portion. And it must be aligned with this little machine cutout in the thread. And by doing that, you will ensure that the carrier is properly positioned in the lower unit and you'll be able to install that key in the slot. One last look inside, everything looks good, everything is out of the way, and as we shift this down the cavity, it may be necessary to rotate the drive shaft up top to move that pinion gear and clutch dog to help you align the teeth from the reverse gear on the bottom portion of this carrier to help you shift it in all the way past this thread right here. And I'll put my hands basically inside here, do my best not to touch the outer portions where the grease is. I will need to use my left arm to adjust this thrust ring and right onto the shaft. Align the thrust ring, and again, that little key slot must be aligned with the machine cut in the thread up top. I'm just kind of wiggle it back and forth, and it should slide right in. And from here, you may need to pull it back out to align that key again in that slot. And that grease really helps when aligning that key slot with the machine groove. It's very easy to turn this carrier, even being inside that cavity. One last good push, and that is flush. From here, that little teeny tiny key. Do your best not to drop it. See that? Now to a close-up of the carrier inside the lower unit and that key. As you can see, is perfectly aligned in that groove in the thread and the top slot of the carrier. And part number for that key is right there down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link to purchase that. Now what we'll do, we've got a package of two tab washers and just match the one up with yours. In our case, it is this one and not the other one. This portion right here we want to make sure is aligned on the bottom triangle portion of our carrier. As you can see, the triangle is properly aligned with the lower triangle slot of the carrier. And now it is time to open up our spanner nut, and there's the part number, and tighten this carrier in place. Prior to installing the retainer, make sure it is aligned properly on the face facing out toward the prop or you. You will see the word off with an arrow and additional circles. Those are drill points in the event that this gets seized or stuck in place later down the road when it's time to take this off to remove your carrier to service everything. You'll notice the backside doesn't have anything. So again, position this properly, carefully shift it down, and align it with the threads, and turn it clockwise. And we are actually going to torque this retainer to 210 pounds with a torque wrench. And the torque wrench I have been using in this rebuild process only went up to 150. So I actually had to go borrow one that went up to 210 from a friend. And once it gets hand tight, which it is right now, time to go back to this big tool. Carefully slide it down the propeller shaft and into the slots, lock it in place. We'll grab our socket and the torque wrench and torque it to 210. Torque wrench in hand. And again, 210 pounds. And I might need to reposition this entire lower unit and stand on the ground to give me better leverage. However, I'll do my best to show you as much as I can. And yeah, I'm going to reposition this. All right, DIY, bear with me. I'm going to apply my leg to one side to alleviate this from shifting. And I'm going to torque this to 210. And all we're waiting for is this torque wrench to click. And it is really tough right now. And as you do this, just carefully rotate the drive shaft to ensure you're not forcing that reverse gear teeth into the pinion gear teeth in an offset manner. That could lead to broken teeth. That's not good. And there it goes. You hear that click? Back on top of the workbench, I'll give you a close-up of everything we just installed in the lower unit here shortly. However, what we need to do is test the forward neutron gears to ensure that they work properly. And as I do this, take a look at the propeller shaft as well as up here the drive shaft. And I'll use my left hand to go down to the shift shaft and I'll rotate it clockwise or toward us. And as I move this propeller shaft, you can see the drive shaft rotate as well. 
Now I will shift the shift shaft to the neutral position. And as I rotate this propeller shaft, the drive shaft does not rotate. Next, I'll shift the shift shaft counterclockwise or away from us. And you can see as I rotate the propeller shaft to the right or clockwise, the drive shaft up top also rotates. And back to neutral. Perfect. Now to a close up as promised. And what we need to do now is direct our attention to that tab washer. This is the old one, and I grabbed it to ensure that I am bending the tabs on the tab washer the exact same as the old one. And the two tabs on the left-hand side, those are going to be bent inward or away from us. This one right here, that is going to be bent outward or toward us, and the far left one will be bent inward or away from us. And again, I'll show you. There is the lower triangle portion. Align that. And you can see this tab we bent out earlier in the project and that third one bent in. And that's what we'll do now. What I'm using to punch three of the four in is a nail set. Down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link where to purchase this. There it is. And be patient. Do not hit the shaft with your hammer. No need to rush this. And to another close-up and DIYs in the beginning, the tabs were easy to bend in. However, as time went on, as you can see, I scuffed them up pretty good. They were a little harder, but we got them. From here, we'll pull that final tab outward in between these two little notches here in the retainer. Next, I zoomed in, give you a better view. I'm getting a little creative here. I got a little piece of rubber and I'm going to insert it right there. And I've got needle nose pliers with a bend on them. I'm using the rubber to get a better grip. Now they do make specific tools to pull these out, but I don't have them. And from here, just apply some friendly pressure and bend that upwards. Back to a close up and I've got the tab as far bent out and upward as I possibly could. We still have a few things to do and it's onto the base assembly for the water pump housing and impeller. There's some part numbers, OEM. Check that out, and that will be installed again right up top. And there's the old one. Let's go and open them. Here it is all unpackaged, and again, left side, there's the base, the O-ring, the impeller, a couple gaskets. There's the water pump housing, a new key, the tube, and a few additional rubber seals, as well as the screw. I'll reposition the camera and let's get started. At this point, I've removed the blue tie strap that secured the lower unit to the base. I've grabbed the Quicksilver Marine Grease 24C with Teflon, and that is what the PTFE stands for. The service manual calls for this specific grease during this stage of the project. The base of our water pump, we are going to first install the gasket. And by doing that, make sure you line it up properly as shown here. And you want to put the gasket on before you put the O-ring on, because once you put the O-ring on, it's going to be tough to get that gasket on. What we'll do now is lubricate this O-ring. And yep, you're going to get a little dirty, but that's okay. This grease will help the O-ring shift onto that base a lot more efficiently, and it will assist in creating that watertight or oil-tight seal. I'm going to dry my hands real quick and basically grabbing one end of the base with my thumb and install this o-ring as shown here right in that little gap what i'll do from here is lubricate the outer edge of the base itself as well as just a little bit inside where the seal is do your best not to get sloppy with it And again, just a little bit on the inside of that oil seal. Just like that. Next, I reposition the lower unit and stand back onto the ground to give you a better view of this. Grab your base, ensure that your gasket and O-ring are properly placed, and we'll slide it down the drive shaft. Keep the gasket flush with the bottom portion of the base as you slide this down and align it with the threaded studs.
And as you shift this down, properly align that bottom portion and give it some friendly pressure to properly seat it inside the cavity as shown here. And you will know it's properly seated when it is actually below the surface of the lower unit case. Now it's time to install the gaskets. The first gasket we will install is this one right here, DIYers. It is extremely important to install these gaskets in the proper order, or when it comes time to pressure test, you won't actually be able to hold pressure. Slide these down the threaded studs. Do your best not to rip them. And the top portion of the base has these two black tabs. Properly align the gasket holes with those tabs and push it flush with the base. Next, your faceplate, as shown here. Same thing, it's got two holes for those two tabs. As shown here, and the final gasket, this one right here. Same thing, align the tabs with the holes and push the gasket flush with the top portion of the faceplate. Now it's time to install the key. I'm going to turn the drive shaft. You can see the machine cut out for the key and the back side of the key, what I did was apply just some grease and this is going to help it stick to the actual shaft as shown here. I'll zoom in, there it is. And I am going to shift the drive shaft back so that the key is perfectly aligned and facing the rear portion of the lower unit. Back to the workstation, and again, here is the brand new water pump housing. Here is the new impeller. And a couple additional parts. Here is my old housing, and I am going to reference when I install that impeller into the housing. The actual impeller blades or fins or vanes, whatever you want to call them, are positioned the proper way. So I'll set that aside. And to do that, we basically have to grab the housing with our left hand, impeller with our right hand, and shift the entire impeller counterclockwise. But I'm going to lubricate the inner portion of this housing first with Teflon. And this portion, again, don't overdo it. You just need a light coat of grease on the inner portion of this housing. And that's going to assist in getting this impeller in. From here, I'll just add some friendly pressure as I do this. And it's not easy. And there it is, it is in. And from here, what I want to do is align that little groove inside the inner housing with that little gap inside. That will line up right there with the number two. And it is basically in line and flush. I'll give it one last good push down to make sure the entire rubber impeller is properly seated in that housing. And a quick reference to the old one just to ensure they're the same. If you install this incorrectly, you're going to overheat your engine. That is not what you want. I'll set that aside. And what I will do next is lubricate the inner seal that the water tube is going to seat up against. And install the water tube. And that is it. I'm just cleaning some marks off the water tube. Set that aside. Next thing I'm going to do is just lubricate the inner seal or top portion of the impeller inside. Again, don't overdo it. Next, time to install the impeller. And as you do this, what we did was properly align the internal impeller so that the groove will line up with the key. And if you do this correctly, it should go on very easily. As shown here. Now it's time to install the hardware. I've got the half inch nut and washer. And I'm going to hand tighten this only. Next, your 716 washer and nut. Again, hand tighten only. 
Do not cross thread these nuts onto the threaded studs. That would not be good. And now to the front side. Last but not least, your 5 16 screw. Back to the ratchet and socket, and we are going to tighten all of the hardware in sequence. And what I mean by that is we will start here and tighten this five to seven turns, come to this nut, five to seven turns, five to seven turns, five to seven turns. And by doing that in sequence, it will properly seat this housing to the gasket to create that watertight seal. At this point, I've got all three nuts secured and the 5 16 screw, and I've grabbed the gasket here. I lubricated the inside of it, and just shift this all the way down flush with the top portion of the water pump housing. Next, I grabbed the O-ring, and I lubricated that with that 2-4-C grease, and same thing. Shift it over the spline portion, and it will shift right into the machine groove on the shaft. Back on top of the workstation, I am now going to carefully remove the rubber oil feed gasket. Just have a little pick tool here. And it comes right out, as you see here. Not a little stubborn in that area. There it is. I am now going to clean the inner portion. Next, I grab the new oil seal, and I just dabbed a little bit of SAE 90 gear lube, and I'm going to lubricate the gasket as shown here, and I'm going to properly seat it inside the little groove or cutout and just apply some friendly pressure and clean up the top portion as shown there. To a different camera angle, here is the finished product as you can see, and our specific service manual called for those nuts to be tightened to 70 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds, and that 5 16 screw to 30 inch pounds. So reference your owner's manual to ensure you're not over tightening the water pump housing in place. What we'll do now is shift down and replace the water pickup insert. You got one on each side. We'll need a Phillips screwdriver. Again, just a standard Phillips screwdriver. And I'm going to unscrew counterclockwise the screw. And as you can see, they become loose. I'm holding the rear insert and nut in place. And let me give you a view of that. To the opposite side, there's the nut, and I am continuing to unscrew that long screw that goes through the case, and I'm just applying some pressure to the nut because once the screw is loose, that entire nut will basically fall out just like that. From here, I'll come to the opposite side with the screwdriver and just apply some pressure to the base of the screw to pull the screw out from the other side. And once I pull that out, I can carefully pull the inserts right out. Check that out. It's got a little hook on the top that feeds up and loops into the back side of the case. To the opposite side, what I'll do is grab the screw and chances are the insert will come out with it, as you see here. And there it is. Let's go get the new parts. In front of us now are the new parts, starting with the nut. There's the part number. And then I've got two inserts. I'll do my best to post links down below in the comment section as well as description section. And here is the part number for that long screw. Let's go ahead and open everything. New parts are on package. I want to show you the difference between the inserts. One has basically a nut mold to it, as you see here. That's going to go on the left side, obviously. And this one does not have that nut mold. It's perfectly round. And that is for the screw. That'll go on this side. And here are the old parts put back together. Basically trash. All I'm doing now is vacuuming real quick. Next. Grab your new part, again, the perfect circle mold. It's got this top hook. Shift that in place and push in from here. Put the screw through to the opposite side and this is the nut mold. And again, that upper hook. And from here, I'll basically push them in and align that screw and push it all the way through the insert. There we go. As you can see here, you can kind of see the screw coming through. Grab your brand new nut and align it properly in the nut mold as you see there. And I'm going to apply pressure with my thumb and go to the opposite side and apply pressure with the screwdriver. And without cross-threading the screw into the nut, go ahead and tighten the two together. And on the inner thread of the nut is some thread locker, which is nice. Back to the opposite side and I'm just tightening the screw. Don't over tighten it. You want it snug, but do not over tighten it. To a closer look, as you can see, to the opposite side again, the base of the screw came right through and is secured in the thread locker of that nut. 
and DIYers. That completes part six. From here, we got to do a pressure test. DIYers, here we are back at the Craftsman workstation, and again, this is part seven of our lower unit full rebuild. And what we're going to do prior to installing the prop is we are going to perform a pressure test. And here are the three fittings that came with our pressure test kit. In our case with our Merc Cruiser, it is the smallest valve here. And it has a rubber O-ring to create that airtight seal. The top portion here will go into this fitting here. This is our hand pump and pressure gauge. We'll show you that here shortly. In addition, we have a C-clamp and just a couple pieces of rubber. And what we need to do is we need to block off this little oil feed line and rubber seal because without doing that we won't be able to do the pressure test and that is where the c-clamp is going to come in as well as those pieces of rubber in addition scrolling above right now is a link to a video that gives you a full review on this cool hand pump and gauge we love this however what we'll do from here is reposition the camera and get started what i did next was rotate the entire stand and lower unit 180 degrees and i also added some shipping paper to the back because i needed a little support to help hold this lower unit more forward and up on the stand itself and that's going to give us the access we need to remove this drain port on the opposite side there's my c-clamp and i used two pieces of rubber on top to create that airtight seal on that oil feed gasket and hole down below i used an additional rubber too alleviate scratching. In addition, I have a thick flathead screwdriver, a pick tool, the fitting, and a brand new yellow rubber o-ring for the drain port screw. First, I'll grab the thick flathead screwdriver. I'm going to align it and properly and safely remove the drain screw. As shown here, set that in a safe location. Next, I'll grab the pick tool. I'm going to carefully remove the old o-ring or gasket, as you see right there. Grab some paper towel and just maybe about five to 10 seconds, clean out the inner thread that that drain screw screws into. Pretty dirty. Next, I grab the adapter, ensure that your O-ring is installed. I am not going to install the new seal yet. I'm just going to properly align the thread. Do not cross thread this. It should go in extremely efficiently and easy. If it's not going in, back it out, realign it and begin screwing it in again. Do not over tighten it, but you do want it snug as shown here. Next, I'll grab the hand pump, and here is the fitting here. I will align it and apply some friendly pressure until it clicks and locks in place, as shown there. What I'll do next, grab the hand pump. I'll try to give you a good view of this. The first couple pumps, maybe five pumps, your gauge may not register because you are putting air into a hollow case, and it may take a few seconds to fill that gap with air. And ours is registering. Again, with our specific serial number, we have between 13 to 17 PSI. And in the event that you hear hissing as you pressurize this, go ahead and release your air from the case and pinpoint the leak and address it. As you can see, I'm just shy of five PSI. And this takes a few minutes and some friendly strength. Right now we're just shy of maybe eight or nine. And DIYers, here we are dead on 15 PSI, as you can see here. And right now, great news. No hissing or any signs of this air bleeding out the rebuilt case. Taking a step back and again, here's the configuration. We are holding 15 PSI, as you can see right there. And right now we're going to give it maybe about three to four hours. And if any air seeps out of that, we need to address whatever is causing that. However, if we come back in about three to four hours and it is dead locked on 15, again, we are very happy. That is a successfully rebuilt lower unit. DIYers, here we are at the halfway mark. And most people will do this for about 30 to 40 minutes. However, we're going to do it for three hours. As you can see, we are still deadlocked at 15 PSI. And at the halfway mark, what we are going to do is rotate the propeller shaft. And the service manual calls for this because in the event that your lower unit is creating an airtight seal in the present position, great. However, if you move the propeller shaft and it begins hissing, that's not good. That needs to be addressed. And in our case, moving the propeller shaft back and forth doesn't do anything. And that is what we were hoping for. Still deadlocked at 15. And again, the service manual calls for that because the present position may be holding an airtight seal. However, the movement of the prop shaft, if you hear hissing, that needs to be addressed. That's not good. 
However, in our case, both stationary and movement back and forth with the prop shaft, it is locked on 15 and that is good. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, DIY's back at it. Got the gloves back on and here is the pressure gauge. Again, deadlocked at 15 PSI. That is a successful pressure test. What we'll do now is press the pressure release valve and we are going to drain all the PSI out of the case. And once it zeroes out, I'll set the pump down. We are going to remove the fitting. We are now going to carefully unscrew the adapter from the lower drain port. Set that aside. And I went back to the OEM style gaskets as you see here, as opposed to the rubber. What I'll do is grab the drain port screw and put the gasket over the actual screw there as you see. And I'm going to screw this in. Again, do not cross thread this. That's the last thing you want to do. You want it snug, but do not over tighten it either. I changed camera angles. I'm now going to remove the C-clamp and carefully, no need to rush this part. You don't want to scratch your lower case. Mine's pretty beat up. So in our case, it doesn't matter much. And again, the two rubber pieces here. And you can see where the little piece of rubber made an imprint on the top oil feed O-ring. Coming back up top, just ensure that your rubber O-ring is still in place and not damaged. From here, let's rotate the stand in the lower unit. And we did just that. We have access to the rear portion of the case, the propeller shaft, bearing carrier, etc. DIYers, this is an incredible hand pump and gauge kit. We definitely recommend it. However, scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows you the common causes of an unsuccessful lower unit pressure test. So in the event that you are trying to pressure test your lower unit and air is seeping out, hopefully we can help you pinpoint the exact cause and help you get it fixed. From here, time to install the lower unit to the upper unit. Here's our new hardware, some part numbers. We'll talk about that as we continue with the project. We're going to lubricate the drive shaft splines and remove the old hardware. I repositioned the camera. Again, I'm using the Quicksilver 24C with Teflon. That's what that PTFE stands for. And do not overdo it. I just have a little bit of grease on my fingertip and I'm going to lubricate the drive shaft splines. as well as this O-ring that we also lubricated in the previous steps during the water pump install. Next, direct your attention to the water tube. In the previous step, we also greased or lubricated the base of this tube. There is a seal in there. Here is the old water pocket cover, overheated and melted as you can see. And you see this little indent right there. The way this works, when we shift the lower unit in place to the upper unit, it is going to guide this water tube through the brand new tube, and the base of it is going to go into that seal. So you want to make sure, again, that seal is lubricated. But the brand new water pocket cover is already installed on the upper unit. Next, we have three 5 8 nuts, and carefully remove these without dropping them inside the engine. Next, remove the washer as well as your small little Phillips screw, as shown here. Now to a close-up, ensure that your seal is properly flush in position with the top portion of your water pump housing. I also added some 2-4 grease to the oil seal here. Slide to the back and remove the bolt that the anode secures to. Back to the hardware, here is the old bolt we just removed, here's the new one. And what I'll do down below in the comment section as well as description section are links to where to purchase these parts. New hardware and very important DIYers, you have to install this bolt first or prior to securing the lower unit back to the upper unit because if you forget to install this at this step, you will not have the option to install it when the two are connected. Now to the upper unit, a couple pieces of hardware that we need to remove. Coming down below and two 5 8 nuts on the bottom. and this bolt right here. Back up top, coming inside where the shifter is. Very important DIYers, ensure that it is placed in the forward position. Not this way, not that way, but forward and perfectly straight facing this little bolt hole and screw hole. Back to the lower unit, and just as important, the shift shaft bushing rod here, you see the splines that I'm pointing at, 
rotate that clockwise, and we need to lock the propeller shaft, as shown here. By turning it counterclockwise, you will see and hear or feel that the propeller shaft is locked in place. Taking a step back, and I am at a huge disadvantage with the outdrive disconnected from the boat. If your upper unit is still connected to your boat, that's good. It will be easier. Bear with me as I go through the next steps. Back to the upper unit. I want to come inside and show you where the drive shaft is going to sneak into. See that little oil seal right there? The drive shaft splines will go up and into that, and the splines themselves will attach to the splines of the vertical gear already installed in the upper unit. At this point, I've repositioned the units, and the more I thought about it, I'm going to do this in reverse compared to what you do with the upper unit still connected to the boat. In other words, I'm going to keep the lower unit as is. I'm going to pick up the upper unit, shift it into place, align everything, and lower it down and secure it. And again, as I shift this in place, we have a threaded stud here, two here, the drive shaft, the water tube, two threaded studs on the lower portion of the upper unit will feed right through there, and this little pin right here. So take your time, be patient and precise. In addition, as I shift this in place, I have to remind myself that the lower unit stand is not designed to hold the weight of both the upper and lower connected. I've got my left hand in place to align the copper pipe with the water tube. And once that's aligned, carefully continue shifting this down and on the studs. And from here, just kind of jiggle it in place. And if it goes all the way through, great. If it does not, you will have to shift down below and rotate the propeller shaft to properly align the splines inside. Coming to the back side, and again, counterclockwise just a little bit. And you saw it fall just a hair. You can see the threaded stud coming through. I'm going to position the nuts in place and carefully, without cross-threading them, screw them in. That one's hand tight, coming to the back. And again, no need to rush this. Next, I've got this washer and that small screw. Align that properly. And I'm gonna wait on the screw. I'll set that right here. And the 5 8 nut, go ahead and hand tight only. And from here, I will carefully, again, without cross-threading it, screw that screw in hand tight. And the screw is gonna alleviate that washer from turning as you tighten the nut. And next, my brand new 5 16 bolt goes underneath the lower unit, feeds up, and will help secure the back end of the upper to the lower. And again, hand tighten. Next, tighten it in place with your 5 16 Allen. And as I tighten this in place, you may see the back end of the upper and lower begin to get closer and closer. And that's a good thing. I'm not going to tighten this all the way. Back to the front 5 16 and again, these have thread locker on, so they are going to continue to get tighter and tighter. And here shortly, we will grab our torque wrench. Now to the back. Next down below, you have two openings that the threaded studs from the upper unit feed through and five eighths nuts here. Go ahead and hand tighten them and secure them. Next, go ahead and tighten them with your socket and ratchet. Back to the front five eighths nut. Now that we have all the hardware secured, let's go ahead and reposition the outdrive to the other stand. And here it is back on the stand designed specifically to hold the upper and lower connected to each other as shown here. Back to the workbench and a special thank you to that lower unit stand. During this entire project, it worked perfectly. Here is our Anno kit. And down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link to where to purchase this as well as a link to a video showing the entire replacement of our anodes. However, for this video, we are only installing the trim portion. Let's go and open it. Here it is opened up and the additional anode portions inside 
And this is magnesium. This is for fresh water only, as you can see right there. These anode kits come in aluminum, zinc, and magnesium. And for your convenience, down below in the comment section as well as description section also is a link to a video where we talk about the three different types of anodes and what they are used for. However, in short, magnesium is for fresh water, aluminum is for both, and zinc is for salt water. Let's go and remove that sticker. Sticker removed and again... Earlier in the project, we installed the new bolt prior to connecting the upper to the lower. As I mentioned earlier, if you forget to do that, that's not good because at this stage, you won't be able to fit this bolt inside. Real quick DIYers, I wanted to show you the difference in condition with the old anode and the new one. Check that out. This one has seen its better day. It's even cracked, look at that. Big difference. Time to install the brand new anode. What I've got here is a 3 8 Allen key. I'm going to shift this down into the hole here. Grab the bottom bolt. It is now inside the bolt and I will shift the anode up and in place in the circular cutout. And without cross-threading this, carefully tighten your anode in place. Now to a close-up of the brand new anode installed underneath as shown here. Next, I grab my Craftsman torque wrench. I've set it to 35 foot pounds. We need to torque the three lock nuts to 35 foot pounds. Two on the bottom, one right here. I'll start with this one. And you will know the lock nuts are torqued to 35 foot pounds when the torque wrench itself makes a clicking sound. And I'll try not to get in your way. There it is. Now to the bottom, to the bottom. And again, all we're waiting for is 35 foot pounds with that clicking sound. There it is, to the opposite side. There it is. I'll center the outdrive back on the stand. Back to the workbench, and now it is time to install the new cap. Look at that, what a difference. Can you believe it, DIYers? We have been busy. Back to the outdrive, and inside here is that bolt. Again, we had to install prior to connecting the upper to the lower. And our brand new cap here, the plastic teeth. Align it properly and just push it in place, as shown here. That looks a lot better. Different camera angle now. I'm going to just slide the propeller on, flush. And from here, I'm going to rotate the yoke shaft. And at the same time, I'm going to test forward, neutral, and reverse and verify that the propeller is rotating accordingly and correctly. And right now, it is in forward. And that is good. I'm going to shift the shifter to neutral. It should not move, good. Now to reverse. And that is good. You also wanna check for clearance between the propeller and the brand new anode. And as you can see, not an issue. Back to neutral. Back to forward. Awesome. Here's a better view of it. Again, forward. Neutral. And reverse. Back to the workbench. And I've got the outdrive tucked away in the corner there. Directing our attention to the propeller. I'm going to sand it down, repaint it, get it all fresh and new. There is the Quicksilver Phantom Black that matches your outdrive. However, we're not going to bore you with that in this video. We will post that link down below in the comment section as well as description section. Definitely check that out after watching this video. And with that said, we'll film that video and we'll be right back with you. Back with you DIYers and we have repainted the propeller. And it looks great. Nice and shiny. And we've got a bunch of new parts. The thrust washer, continuity washer, castle washer, which is this big piece right there. And we've got this piece right here, which will be positioned in between the nut and the castle washer. And the propeller turned out very well with that light gray primer and phantom black spray. What I'll do now is reposition the lower unit and continue the project. Back to the workbench, I have repositioned the outdrive. We'll get to that here shortly. I want to show you new compared to old parts and starting with the left side, the thrust hub or washer. And first glance, two things. Number one, it's a different color. And number two, I noticed it's smaller. And so... I called the headquarters, Mercruiser Technicians, and talked to them about it. And they informed me that this part is for a different propeller. 
So we're going to clean up the original thrust washer and use it. As far as the continuity washer, this is a very unique washer and it's kind of confusing or tough to see, but each tooth is bent in the opposite direction. So really when it comes time to install this, there is no right or wrong way to install it. To the right of that is your castle washer. We will use the new one, just a different color. I like that and the prop washer and we'll use the original nut. Let's head to the outdrive. And here's the propeller shaft, the splines, and the thread, and inside here again, the bearing carrier. And as far as the propeller shaft, it makes a beveled upward mold to it right here, just prior to going into the oil seal on the top portion or outer portion of the bearing carrier. And grab your thrust hub washer, as shown here, and the back side actually has a rounded machine cut to it, which will go right on over the splines and mate with that beveled portion of the propeller shaft as shown here. And again, make sure that the thrust hub washer is installed properly. You'll notice the machine cut right here. Next, we need to lubricate the propeller shaft splines with 2,4-C as shown here. There's what it looks like inside. And just grab a little bit on your finger and really lubricate the splines of the propeller shaft. And this is going to make it easier down the road when it's time to take the propeller back off and service whatever you need to service. After lubricating the propeller shaft splines, I cleaned all the grease off my fingers. I'm grabbing the propeller and as you see here, that is the part that goes on and just carefully align the splines and it should go right on. And shown there. Back to the workbench, what I'll do is grab the castle washer, also known as your spline washer, flip it upside down. I'll grab the continuity washer and I'm going to seat this on the back side or underside of the spline or castle washer prior to installing this on the propeller shaft. In an update again, all I did was install the continuity washer on the underside or back side of that spline washer. Back to the outdrive, coming inside the propeller, I do want to show you a close-up view where we are right now. You can see just maybe a quarter inch of the spline coming out of the propeller, and that's what you're looking for because, again, the castle washer only has about a quarter inch of spline machined into it. Another quick reposition of the camera will continue the project. Grab your castle or spline washer, as shown here, and carefully slide it and align the splines as shown here and push it flush with the propeller next grab the prop or tab washer and install it as shown here last but not least your prop nut and the rounded portion will face outward do not cross thread the thread that would not be good what i recommend doing is hand tightening it first And once it aligns with the proper tab washer, you will notice that will spin with it, as shown here. See that? And I'll hold the propeller with one hand. And all I'm doing is hand tightening the propeller nut. From here, what I need to do is grab a block and place it in between the propeller blade and the stand to alleviate the propeller from spinning. I want to keep this in neutral because the next thing we're going to do is apply 55 pounds of torque with our torque wrench. And I don't want that 55 pounds of torque being applied to the internal gears. So again, I'll grab the block and keep the entire outdrive in neutral. There it is, DIYers. I placed the 2x4. I'll raise the camera just slightly. There is how I have it positioned and I will shift the propeller until the lower blade is flush on that board. Coming inside to the shift crank and make sure it's in neutral. Next, grab my Craftsman torque wrench and I have it set to 55 pounds. And DIYers, no need to rush this, go slow, be precise. And all we're waiting on is for this torque wrench to tighten that propeller nut to 55 pounds. And once it gets to 55 pounds, the torque wrench itself will make a clicking sound. Quick update, I applied a second 2x4 to alleviate the propeller from sliding as I apply this 55 pounds of torque on this prop nut. There it goes, 55 pounds is set. Do another close up and I am going to remove the 2x4s. 
And the next step, very important, you've got two important things to take into consideration or check for the service manual. Number one, the service manual calls for at least, in other words, a minimum of two threads showing on the propeller shaft after you apply the 55 pounds of torque. In our case, it looks like we have three, almost four, so we're good. And the second thing, you've got all these tabs on the proper tab washer, and at least three of them have to line up with the slots on the castle washer per the service manual. In our case, we've got one here, here and right there we'll bend those three in what i did next was actually put the two by fours back in place to alleviate the propeller from rotating and i'm sure there's easier ways to do this but this is how i'm going to do it i'm taking these needle nose pliers with an arc and i'm taking one jaw and going through the hole of the tab and applying some pressure to the second one to the third one and surprisingly this is pretty friendly it's very thin aluminum. And unfortunately, it looks like I scratched it. However, very simple fix. I'll touch that up with some paint. And there is the finished product, as you can see. I'll remove the wood. One last thing per the service manual, after you apply the 55 pounds of torque with the torque wrench, and you come back down here and check your tab washer in relation to the castle washer slots, the service manual states, if the tabs are not aligned, go ahead and continue tightening that nut slightly past 55 pounds until you get at least three tabs aligned with the castle washer slots so you can lock everything in place. Back to the workstation and DIYers, that completes part seven of our lower unit full rebuild. We hope this helped. What we'll do next is perform a pressure test prior to adding the gear oil. And in previous videos, we pressure tested the upper unit separately and all went well. However, now that everything is back together, we are going to do one last pressure test with the lower unit connected to the upper unit. And again, everything installed. And if you want to check out that video, that video is scrolling above. Again, we hope the video helped. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.